Ray Marine, proud sponsor of the Australian Maxi Championship being conducted for the third time here on Sydney Harbour and it's the Solar's Big Boat Challenge which doubles as the fourth and final event of the Australian Maxi Championship. Well we have a beautiful sea breeze here from the north east this afternoon, a classic race on Sydney Harbour and this race has been running for more than a quarter of a century and as far as the public is concerned it's the most anticipated event in the lead up to the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Now since 2006 the CYCA has dedicated the event to raise awareness and funds for the safety of life at Sea Trust. That's the Solus Trust and it's raised and distributed nearly two million dollars to support families in need and also marine rescue operations. And as you can see, um, it's a beautiful day, a cloudless sky here on Sydney Harbour. And alongside me is the voice of sailing here in this country, Peter Shipway, a veteran of uh, 31 Rolex Sydney Hobarts, a multiple winner in your own right. But this Solus Big Boat Challenge, something very special, Peter. Yes, good afternoon, Gordon. Good afternoon, everyone. A cracker of a day, to use a good Aussie expression. This nor'easterly breeze, about 16 to 18 knots, expected to get up to 20 knots. It's a bit later this afternoon and we're absolutely in store for a thrilling race. Nine big boats on this starting line for the first beat up towards Manly to Canoy Point and then the exciting run back down to Shark Island. It's going to be a thrilling race no doubt. Three of the super maxis in Andu Comanche, Law Connect and the new Scallywag. Interesting to see how she goes and then some of the mini maxis. It's all to play for. We couldn't get a better day and, and I hope everyone's enjoying it and then is one of the mini maxis in money penny sean langman's charge yes well there are six mini maxis urm group has been dominating in the blue water point score the arty center sydney blue water point score they've won three of the five races and also we have um, no limit wild oats 10 alive and whisper in the mini maxis they're the the, the boats from 60 to 79 feet and the maxis from 80 to 100 feet so we're set for a spectacular dash. It's going to be a sprint around Sydney Harbour and as we say this beautiful nor'easter so a beat up to Canning Point below Manly and then two and a half circuits of the harbour Peter. Yeah, well, there's the course. There's graphics there. We start down here in Double Bay near Clark Island. It's a big beat up to Canoy Point near Manly, rounding that mark to starboard. Back down to Shark Island to a mark laid to the southeast of Shark Island, but you have to leave Shark Island to starboard. Then we go back to Canoy Point, back round Shark Island again, and then the finish down at the iconic Sydney Opera House. Couldn't be a better day, Gordon. A lot of spectators out, as you'd expect. As you said, the sky clear. The nor'easterly breeze in, probably pumping up to near 18 to 20 knots by the time this race gets underway, and we're about 10 minutes away from the start. So what are the implications, being a fixed course to Cano Point, what are the implications uh, as far as the start is concerned? Well, like any yacht race, the start is paramount. You've got to be clean. Um, to try and make sure that there's no other other boats around you. You've got to keep your nose clean, try and get clean air, which is a bit difficult for the smaller boats because these 100 footers will dominate and even if they miss the start slightly, they'll move through the fleet pretty quickly and give you very dirty air for the boats behind. So the smaller boats will have to extract themselves from that and try and get clear air and mightn't want to sail the optimum course that they would if they weren't in line with the bigger boats. So it'll It'll be a race to Bradley's head first with the incoming tide. The boats will want to get to Bradley's and then punch off Bradley's on a port tack. But the three super maxis, well, they've got star-studded crews amongst them, so it'll be very thrilling to see who gains the start there and who can win the first rights to Bradley's head.
Well, SHK Scallywag, um, lighter than the other two 100 footers, so probably a little more nimble, but getting that start amongst the three 100 footers so critical. And they'll be aiming to get ahead of Andrew Comanche, which seems to have that wonderful acceleration off the line in these fresh conditions. Well, SHK Scallywag has had 15 months really in hospital. They've remodeled her dramatically. They've moved the mast back. They've got all new sails. And she's only had a first race last Friday to Cabbage Tree Island, but on board their URM, which has been the absolute star performer so far in the Audi Blue Water Championship. Skippered by Marcus Ashley Jones, a very strong crew, including Grant Simmer, America's Cup winning navigator way back in 1983. She has been an outstanding performer on handicap. As we look upwind at Law Connect, Christian Beck's boat has been three times runner-up in the last three Sydney Hobart races. Can it be a victory for this year for Christian Beck in three weeks' time for the big race south to Hobart? But today, it's all to play for amongst these three maxis for the Lion Honours. And it's good to see Scallywag win her first race yesterday in a short offshore off Sydney Heads. She got the better of both Andu and Law Connect. So that'll give the boys a bit of impetus. But in these stronger wins, I think it'll probably favour Law Connect and Andu Comanche today. But it'll see how Scallywag goes in the stronger breezes, but the big, wide Law Connect and Andrew Comanche, boy, they're going to be powerful, especially downwind today. Tony Mutter at the helm of Law Connect, six times around the world he's been, and he's won the race two times around the world. Brad Jackson aboard as well, another six-time round the world up. There for Christian Beck, a very, very strong offshore crew. And don't forget Chris Nicholson, uh, world champion in so many classes. Um, around the world sailor himself and a wonderful rapport, wonderful relationship between Tony Mutter and also Chris Nicholson. Yeah, one of the stars, Nico. Twice, I think, Australian Yachtsman of the Year, Olympian, done a lot of miles. He's been around the world a number of times and uh, he'll be guiding uh, Tony around the harbour today with a bit of local knowledge and this strong sea breeze. And there's one of the favourites, Wild Oats 10, not 11, the big boat. This is 10, the 66 footer. Built in 19, uh, sorry, in 2004 to defend the Admirals Cup that Bob Oatley won with the previous Wild Oats, but the Admirals Cup was cancelled that year and uh, it hasn't been since. But Wild Oats 10 was built for that defence, as we see her just going behind URM and Mark Richards, the long-time skipper of all the Wild Oats, he's at the helm today of Wild Oats 10. So let's go on board. URM and David Johnson in the, the press briefing this morning explaining how this boat was purchased um, just a few years ago and uh, everything's been renewed on board. Okay, well that's Grant Simmer on the right and there's Marcus Ashley Jones just to the left of him at the helm and uh, just checking the line now we've got about uh, seven minutes to go to the start and that's the live action aboard URM. Certainly a favourite for handicap honours today and also perhaps in three weeks' time in the Rolex Sydney to Hobart yacht race. And the four Johnson brothers are on board, Anthony, um, David, Andrew and also Nick. And uh, David is the CEO of the URM Group, which is a very successful global company involved in waste management and sustainability. So the start is at 12.30 Eastern Summer time here on, uh, in Sydney, New South Wales. So wherever you're watching, locally or around the world, we say a very good afternoon to you in classic, beautiful conditions on the harbour. It's, it's hard to describe just how good it is, Gordon. Well, there's a, a wonderful battery of spectator craft out as well. Um, probably 60 or 70 boats as we come up to this hooter. Okay, five minutes to go to the start of this year's Solus Big Boat Challenge on Sydney Harbour. Nine boat fleet. They'll all be on heavy weather jibs, J2s probably on uh, Andu Comanche. We got the call from them earlier that that's what they're carrying upwind. Plenty of breeze upwind. So it'll be travelling down, a lot of twist in the sails. Full power on. And Tony Mutter on Law Connect made the point this morning at the press conference that the start, uh, as Peter Shipway mentioned, just so critical for these 100 footers because 
There aren't any or too many passing lanes in this particular course. Two and a half times round the harbour. So good start, absolutely imperative for the big boys. <laughs> And also somewhat dictated by the depth of these uh, three big maxis, Gordon. They've, they draw so much with these long keels with a bulb on the bottom of them that they sometimes have to negotiate the channels rather than the middle of the harbour where it's a little bit shallower. So that could somewhat dictate the path they take. But I think they'll be plugging the left-hand or western shore of the harbour to just to get out of the tide just a little bit. But uh, they'll have to minimise the tax and also be careful of where the opposition is. So the three boats, big boats, should have a, a battle royal and then the rest of the fleet, well, they'll have certainly have a battle within a battle to try and extract their clean air and uh, to sail in freer air as we're watching Andrew Comanche go up in there, just away from the starting line. We've got three minutes, 20 to go. Gee, there's a good flex spectator fleet as we go aboard Comanche. Well, she's the, the winx, isn't she, of the Australian Ocean Racing? That's right. Herman winning at the helm, looking anxiously around. No Ian Murray. He's away on America's Cup duty in the uh, Middle East. And I'm sure he's tuning in. If we are, Ian, we say hello to you. And we've got another old bloke, John Winning Sr. aboard, to uh, give them some advice around the harbour today. And John Winning Sr. will be going to Hobart aboard Comanche, along with his son, and daughter, Jamie, doing her first Hobart race, and she's on board today as we're watching Scallywag run back without her jib, unfur un her jib still furled at this stage. So they're the three maxis, Law Connect, Andu, and Scallywag. Just ahead of Andu is Wild Oats 10. Yeah, when you say John Winning's an old bloke, he's the same vintage as you, Peter. He's a, he's a year or two younger, so we're both old, I'll put it that way, Gordon. <laughs> About the same age as you. <laughs> no comment. Okay. okay, look at that scene. Isn't that marvellous? Clear sky, Harbour Bridge, Opera House, Sydney skyline, and we're just over two minutes to go. The breeze, nor'east, 16 to 18 knots. And the nerves will be pumping away on these crews now, just to stay clean off this starting line. They don't want any damage leading up to the Hobart race. But having said that, they'll be pushing the button a little to try and get this start nailed. So we're watching, still watching Scallywag, still to unfurl their jib. All boats running back into Double Bay now. Just trying to do time on distance into this start. A minute 30 to go. Andrew Comanche tacking. Looking at this breeze, I think that they'll want to be down towards the pin, these three big boats. I would think to try and get over towards Bradley's head quickly. There goes Andrew Comanche. She's starting to rumble down towards that end. That's Clark Island just to the right and above her. For those that know Sydney Harbour, we're just out off Double Bay in the Point Piper area. There's Andrew just rolling over the top of Wild Oats 10. You can see how big these 100 footers are. So, okay, there's the minute signal. We're, un we're almost underway. Oh, here comes Law Connect barreling in. Scallywag's going to miss this, I think. She's going to be back a little. You can see Andy Comanche well advanced. She's the most lured of the fleet. Law Connect coming up here at the windward end. 36 seconds to go. They're a little early, Law Connect. You can see it trying to wipe off speed by rolling the boat into windward to slow her down. Andrew Comanche's got all the runway down to Leward. She can start to wind up and put the foot down. There she goes. Jib starting to come in. Law Connect getting up towards the line. Look at that. Andrew Comanche looks good. Down she goes. She puts the pedal down. She'll just wind up. She'll be powering away. Law Connect wants this windward end. Scallywag coming through underneath yeah, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, she might. She's done all right, Scallywag. I thought she got a bit behind, but she's. They were away. Have we got all clear? Recall. We've got a recall. Whisper, Dave Griffith's boat. He was down that pin. He's over. That's a disappointment and a bad start for Whisper in this small course. Well, they had tore their spinnaker at the start yes. in the Cabbage Tree Island on Friday evening, so the bad luck continues. 
Well, that's hand advantage, but Law Connect. Tony Mudd has done a terrific job up at, to windward end of the line, and so is URM. That's her bottom left of the screen. Marcus Ashley Jones got her in there and doing a fine job. So the race is on now to Bradley's head. Money Penny alive and uh, Wild Oats 10 also in close company. Sandwich between Law Connect and Scallywag. Well, Scallywag did well. I thought she was going to miss it. But these boats are so quick, as soon as you put the foot down, they can really punch out. And that's what Scallywag has done. But she's hanging in there. I just seen Andrew come round the bow of Law Connect. Okay, that's the picture of the three big boats. So Law Connect on starboard tack at the moment with right of way. That's the trick. When they tack, Law Connect will have all the rights. So she'll probably punch in hard to Bradley's. Andrew trying to go fast to get across the bow of Law Connect, but at the moment, it's bow to bow. And Peter, interesting, you can see the two 66 footers together, alive and Wild Oats 10, absolutely locked together as though they're joined at the hip. Yeah, two sister ships. We've got a, we've got a problem on Whisper. A mainsail is just flogging. I don't know what the problem is. She missed the start. Whisper has a problem, but we'll come back to that later. Okay, now the question will be, can Andrew get onto port and cross Law Connect? I don't think the answer is yes. I think she'll have to take a stern, but can she cross Scallywag? They're punching into Bradley's head. There's the lighthouse of Bradley's head just coming into view. Tacking now. Okay, here goes Andrew. She won't cross Law Connect. Scallywag's bailed out early. Here's the cross. No, Andrew has put the bow down. She's going to go behind Law Connect. So Law Connect leads early on. Breeze, beautiful 18 knot nor'easter here, Gordon. It couldn't be better. Well, oh. We talked about uh, the importance of the start and Law Connect. Um, right just a boat length ahead. Look at that. That is a crisscross if you've ever seen one. But the boat up to windward is URM. And looking back at the fleet, Whisper has a problem. I don't know. I, she could be going home, I think, Whisper. She's reaching down towards Bradley's head. Yeah, Whisper's day's over, certainly. Well, even if she gets back in this race, she has a problem. But anyway, we'll focus on the leaders. All on port tack. This is a tremendous sight. Beautiful sea breeze. They're on their way to Manly. So Andrew Comanche now starting to really accelerate, Peter. Both Law Connect and Andrew would be loving these conditions. Scallywag is tacked in the background. Not the greatest tack. Jib was slow to come on. So now, can Law Connect hold a gauge off Andrew? That's her on the right of screen. Andrew, bottom left. So when they come back, of course, Andrew will have starboard tack rights. I don't think these boats worry too much about the tide, Gordon. They're going so quick. They just want to minimise the tax. But Law Connect looks high on port. You just see how quickly they move away from the Mini Maxis. They're still on Bradley's head. Scallywag sticking to the western shore. Yeah, there's Scallywag going in towards Taylor Bay on the eastern side of Bradley's Head. But the, lead, the battle is on at the front of the fleet. The Law Connect has got some good height here compared to Andrew. They've put the foot down a little bit on Andrew to tr try and drive away from Law Connect. Tony Mudd has got it standing up very nicely and very high, coming into port. So, of course, now the question will be when Andrew tacks, she'll be on starboard, she'll have all the rights, but can Law Connect cross her? And Skellywag uh, very much across at that western shore in a different race. Looks, looks to me that Andu will not cross Law Connect from what we are seeing. And they're going in towards Steel Point at Nielsen Park. Terrific conditions. Look at these two of the world's great super maxis 
hammering it out. And they're all heading to, to Europe, Peter. There's going to be about nine 100 footers racing in Europe next year. And a lot of those boats, hopefully some of them will come back for the, the Rolex Sydney Hobart, some of those overseas boats. OK, we'll, we'll watch closely here. Andrew is not far off attack. They're getting in towards Steel Point. Here they go. Now, here's the... Now, I think Law Connect will cross. If not, she'll tack on the lee bow. Now, Tony Mudd has got her across, I think. She'll probably tack on the gas of Andrew here. Standing by. What's he going to do? Yeah, there he goes. Good stuff. On the Law Connect. They want to punch Andrew's lights out here. They're really on her gas. Now it's a chance for them both to put their foot down. Certainly Law Connect can and really make things awkward for Andrew. You just see the heel these boats sail at, Gordon. They're sailing at more 30, almost 40 degrees. OK, Andrew's got to bail out. Oh, costly. A lot of tax really slow these boats down. Now, what's Law Connect going to do? I think she may get up to speed, then go back and have another look at it. OK, rather down speed tack from Andrew. Nice flat water here, not worrying these boats at all with the incoming tide. So Andrew's going back in towards Nielsen Park. Scallywag still coming off the western shore. Well, that's 10 uh, went that way as well, Peter. OK, so Law Connect standing out in the middle of the harbour. Andrew looks a bit slow there going in towards Steel Point. Breezes down a little. OK, we're going back through the fleet now. Here's Scallywag coming out on port, out of Taylor Bay, and she's a fair way back. Yeah, that's been a losing tack for her on that western shore. She tacked early in Bradley's head, got a bit of dirty air, and they really suffered there. So they'll be about, well, only about 100 metres behind Law Connect, still in the mix. And they're about... Sung Hung Kai, Scallywag. And the owner, Peter, Sing Huang Lee, the Malaysian businessman, the billionaire is watching in Hong Kong and he will be sailing on the boat down to Hobart. As Ragamuffin, she contested the, the first Rolex Sydney Hobart in 2014. But this boat has never taken line on us. So David Witt is a man on a mission. Never taken line on us in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Okay, well, they're in the middle of the harbour, standing in towards Nielsen Park. Here's Law Connect. She's standing in towards George's head off Clifton Gardens. And will she cross Andrew when she comes back on port? There's a great shot. Look at the heel on these boats. Twin rudders. As you can see, she's looking for this little left-hander off the point here, which is traditionally you'll get a nice left-hander in this northeasterly breeze. Scallywag going behind Andrew Camachi. Only about... 30 or 40 metres behind. So they won't go much further on Law Connect, I wouldn't think. Chris Nicholson, there's Tony Mudders here. OK, there's a nice stream of flow coming round the headland. OK, they're getting ready. Here they go. Crew into action. It's a long way to go from side to side on these big boats. OK, nice tack. Runners up. Jib on. Windward centre board up, but it's going to be close. I think Andrew's maybe closed the gap slightly. We'll have a look in a moment. Andrew's on starboard tack. Law Connect looking for the left-hander, which he's got. Well done, Nico. Got a nice left-hander. They're about halfway up this beat. They're off the Western Channel pile. There's the Western Channel pile on the harbour. Law Connect leads. And uh, the crew all aft on that weather rail, which helps to lift the bow out of the water. So I'm small gain to Law Connect, but the boat that's impressed is Scallywag. She's up on the hip of Andu Comanche. So good work from David Witt and his team. Yeah, and Law Connect has advanced by a boat length or so. But she's about three boat lengths ahead. 
What a sight. There's Andrew going back on starboard in towards Oblisk. And those two boats separated by just 20 minutes, Peter, at the finish of last year's Rolex Sydney Hobart. Just a few miles behind, yeah. but certainly things compressed yeah. towards the end of the race, yeah. enabling Law Connect to close that margin. Yep. Well, both boats at times have held the record in the Hobart race. Andrew currently holds it as she tacks right on George's head. OK, she's got to live on the hip of Law Connect here. A nice tack. Crew quickly on the weather side. Runners coming up. They get about 24 tonne of load on those runners, which control the mast and the head stay. Enormous pressure on these big boats. Scallywag hanging in there. Breeze just down a little, probably only about 16 or 17 knots. Mark Bradford and Albie Pratt from North Sales on board. Mark Bradford, normally the sailing master on Blackjack, which is over in Europe, competing very successfully. has taken line honours in everything she's competed in this year. And standing into Oblisk. OK, so Law Connects bounced out away from, Sh uh, from Sound Pigs. That's why she had to tack. You see her there on starboard as we're watching Scallywag go back towards them. And there's a lot of spectator boats that are causing a bit of mayhem. Oh. Andrew Comanche's just tacked as well. And um, Scallywag just trailing by a couple of boat lengths behind Andrew Comanche in third place at the moment. Law Connect leading the way. Looking back through the fleet, Peter, uh, URM then heads up the, the rest of the Mini Maxis. Money Penny doing well, no limit, and also alive. And uh, Wild Oats 10, probably at the rear of the fleet at the moment. Yes, no whisper. I, she's gone home. I don't know what the problem was. She missed, uh, she was over at the start, and she looked to have mainsail problems or. Winch problems, we're not sure, but uh, unfortunately they are no longer in the contest. But it's URM that we're on now. There's Grant Simmer looking upwind. They've done a terrific job to be fourth on the water and uh, would be in a strong position handicap-wise if we look at a live on port, uh, on starboard tack and Wild Oats 10 going across on port at the Western Channel pile. There's a, there's a live former Hobart winner and a strong favourite for this year. Adrian Kahalan, the navigator. It's Gavin Brady at the helm. New Zealander. Stu Bannantyne, round the world veteran and winner many times over. On board, very strong crew here. Just getting a bit light here as they get into the Western Channel. They have virtually sister ships, Wild Oats 10 and uh, Alive, as you mentioned earlier. So they have a battle within a battle. But it's Law Connect who's calling the shots in the Solar's Big Boat Challenge as they tack up towards the Canai Point rounding below Manly. Law Connect ahead of Andrew Comanche and Scallywag. And then URM, the 72-footer, giving away uh, nearly well, 30 feet and probably half the sail area of the 100-footers, but doing a great job as well. OK, well, they're the two leaders there. Law Connect just on the left, there's, well, she's gone out of shot now, there's Andu, there's Scallywag standing in towards South Reef, and there's URM, fourth on the water, but it looks to me, Gordon, looking upwind as they near the weather mark, that I think Law Connect has extended this lead over Andu Comanche, but it's going to provide a thrilling downwind leg as they race down towards Shark Island. And uh, Tony Mutter told us this morning at the press conference, Peter, they will be a little underpowered downwind because they've lost their main big spinnaker. And uh, they're going to have to use less efficient sails downwind. So that's the chance for Andrew Comanche to make up ground. Yes, they ripped their number one downwind spinnaker on Friday night at the start of the cabbage tree race. They've ordered a new one, won't arrive till about a week before Hobart, so they're using a second-hand sail. But I'll see how that 
pans out. I think it'll be okay. There's enough breeze, I think. They'll have such a lead. We're just watching Money Penny, Sean Langman's boat. Yeah, Money Penny. Uh... We've got Keegan York, the current Australian 18 foot skip champion on board. Sean Langman's son, Peter, who has been with him all the way. They competed in the fast set with Maluka of Commandy, the 30 footer this year. And the Reichel Pew 69 is doing a nice job. Yvette Heritage on board. She was an 80 foot skip sailor and sailed a bit with Sean Langman. She's on board today, leaving the uh, baby duties to, uh, to her husband, Mark. So he's at home watching and uh, events enjoying a sparkling Sydney Harbour. And that's the look back at uh, those two, but here's the leaders. Okay, Scallywag's dropped back a little. Law Connect leads comfortably. As we're trying to find the weather mark and URM will be fourth on the water. Again, another solid performance from her, but they're the two leaders. Look at the crew on URM leaning hard, trying to get more stability into the boat. Yes, they've got the uh, the Tom Brady of Ocean Racing on board, Steve Mothy Jarvin. Well, he will be on board for Hobart, but at the moment he's skiing in Aspen. Oh, I beg your pardon, Peter. Yep. Yeah, he's uh, he was to be on board, but uh, he's called off at the last minute. But he will be 14-time Line Honours winner in Hobart race. He'll be back on board for the, the big race south in three weeks' time. But here's the battle at the front. At the moment, full marks to Law Connect. We're just trying to spot the weather mark. Oh, they've still got a fair way to go. OK, Andrews attacked. Law Connect attacking on a gas. Loud. Christian Beck's boys are not letting her off the hook here. They've done a fine job. Scallywag here in third place. Yeah, they'll go out to a ley line, I think, Scallywag, to um, Port Tag ley line. They've got about three or 400 metres to go. That's the, that's the view looking back. So Law connects about uh, 300 metres to go to the top mark. Starboard rounding. And we have a look at Scallywag. Dave Witt at the helm. Scallywag heading out to that ley line for the Cano Point mark. But Law Connect uh, with a nice advantage, probably uh, 100 metres over Andu Comanche at the moment. Christian Beck, the skipper of Law Connect, sailing master Tony Mudder doing a fantastic job. And uh, Christian's son, Indy. Indy Beck is on board and he's doing exceptionally well in the NC38's Australian Championships. What we're finding here, Gordon, this mark is right up um, under Kanai Point, and the breeze is a little bit squirrely here. There's a lot of puffs coming over the hills. It's not steady by any means. You've got to get out of here as quick as you can. And there's going to be a lot of spectator boats around this mark. They've got to get out of there quickly. You just can't move these big maxis that quickly, but she's just about to approach the orange rounding mark, starboard rounding. Well, let's hope this is not dangerous. Well, they'll These move boats quickly. are too close. Okay, there she goes. They've got the A sail, the downwind sail already up on the forestay. They'll unroll that. Okay, she's around. And there's Andrew Kamachi still coming up in the background. And around she goes. She's got to get the mainsail off, bow down, unfurling. There they go. Got a nice puff to get around here. Okay, it's unfurled. Now they've got a sheet on. A couple of speedboats getting out of the way. That little boat there got okay, the almost hit the bowsprit. <laughs> the hydraulic winch is working overtime to get that big sail in and trimmed, but she's away. She's got a very nice lead, Gordon. Yeah, it's going to be about 45 seconds. 
Lorca necked over Andu Comanche. Yeah, just top of screen, Scallywag on the ley line. Andu, we're on command. We'll just have a look what happens here. They've tacked, main sheet off, bow down, and ready to unfurl. Okay, there they go. So that lead is a good 45 seconds. 45 but, seconds, yeah. okay. Maybe a bit more. Okay, they still haven't got that pencil up and locked off yet on Comanche. That's why they can't unfurl. It's not, that four stay is not solid yet. You see it's flopping around as we're watching Scallywag. Still in the hunt, very much so. Yeah, she's about 25 seconds behind Andu. Okay, good unfurl from the boys on the Scallywag. She brained them there. She got a great set. Driving hard at the stern of Andu. Now this is where it becomes tricky. Jiving downwind, you've got to pick your lane to jive in. Look at the full pressure here on the Scallywag. They've got a great puff. Law connectors jived on the star, but in the middle of the heads. They'll be, they'll be jiving downwind. They can't run directly downwind with these asymmetric sails. But they jive downwind. Look at Scallywag, she's hooting down on Andrew Comanche. URM in fourth place, Peter, the 72 footer, about 400 metres from the mark. Closely followed by Alive, another 200 metres astern. And also Money Penny over towards the western side of the harbour. It's worth watching these two big boats jive. There's great shots here, almost in the cockpit with Dave Witt and the boys on Scallywag. Andrew Comanche not far off a jive. But Scallywag trying to get deep here. He might jive before Andrew and sit on his gas here. There he goes. Okay, Scallywag to jive. They furl. Almost complete furl. Jibes. Keel over. Unfurl. Nice job. Nice job. Main sheet off. Furl complete. Just heat her up a bit. We need to keep the pressure on. Andrew's still to jive. Can't be far off it. There she goes. But just looking downwind, I think uh, Law Connects extended a little here as Andrew jibing. Just seems a bit out of rhythm at the moment, Andrew. And Gordon, while we were talking, Steve Moffy Jarvin has texted us from Aspen to say he's watching, enjoying the snow and enjoying the coverage. He's probably having his first pina colada halfway down the slope. Well, for a bloke that doesn't drink, he probably, probably might be. <laughs> Non-alcoholic version. <laughs> OK, well, we leave the slopes of Aspen to the deck of Comanche. She's got a good heading puff here. Oh, look at her go. So as, as we mentioned, the drama here for Law Connect is that they, they lost their, their big number one spinnaker and they've had to compromise here. So this is the opportunity for Andrew Comanche to really close the gap now. You just forget how fast these boats are going. They're doing about 22 knots here as they go down the harbour. So they make the distance looks great, but they're going so quick that the distance, the time is very short. But Law Connect crossing the bow. She's just going down to the east of the Sound Pigs. Okay, we're going back to URM, top of screen. They are around. They're fourth around. That's the distance, that's Law Connect, top of screen. Going in towards Watson's Bay. I think as soon as he clears sound picks there, they'll bail out. Because the breeze will be a bit lighter in Watson's Bay. So this is the chance for Andrew Comanche to compress a bit here. Scallywag and Andu 
middle head in the background. Okay, I think breeze a bit lighter where Law Connect is. He'll need to get out, punch out in the middle of the harbour, I would think, shortly. We'll come to him in a moment. In they go. Okay, off camera, Law Connect jiving to go out into the middle of the harbour. You can just see it's got a lot, a bit lighter here. They may have gone a whisker too far, but certainly some great talent on board, so we shouldn't be critical. They've got a very good lead at the moment. Nice unfurl. Just need a bit of pressure. Certainly was a, a, a lot lighter in here. Andrew Comanche in a lot more breeze, closing the gap. Yeah, well, they're about 20 degrees lower out in middle har mid harbour than Law Connect is. She's just going past the Eastern Channel pile. Okay, she's just starting to wick up now in the middle of the harbour. Chris Nicholson at the back there in the white shirt with a black cap and Andu in the back there. She's closed the distance a bit. You can see the angles of the boats. Andu's about 10 degrees lower than Law Connect, which is a big gain for Andu. So Andu's going out almost to a lay line here. There she's jiving in the background, so it's a bit lot closer than it was. Law Connect just went a few boat lengths too far into Watson's Bay. So Andu jibes, but Law Connect still leads. Scallywag's still in the mix. Still in the mix. He's jived back again. Scallywag off camera. So he's on starboard jive. He's trying to have a piece of Andu, but he's not far enough advanced, I don't think. Scallywag is still behind Andu. Okay, now Law Connects not far off a jive. Andrew had to heat up there to get across the bow of Scallywag. It's Western Channel Pile Light on the harbour, or the old wedding cake. That Scallywag is basically going around. So they're about halfway down this run to Shark Island. That's the, that's the lead. They have closed the gap slightly, as you say, Peter, and you get the feeling that this is going to really get quite tense and dramatic as this race progresses. Andrew Comanche, uh, as we mentioned, has been the Winks of Ocean Racing. She, she wins everything on Lion Honours, although, um, as Peter mentioned, Scallywag took Lion Honours in one of the uh, small offshore races on the weekend. Yeah, that's so one of the, Otherwise, she just dominates. I think it's one of the first times she's been beaten since yeah. she's come back to Australia. She was beaten in the short offshore yesterday by both Law Connect and Scallywag. Well, Scallywag got the job done and Law Connect was second as she's just jiving now. You see, there's enough breeze to leave the headsails up on this short run. They jive with the headsails up and unfurl the, the big A sails, the downwind sails. She was purchased as Perpetual Loyal after breaking the, the race record in 2016 in the Rolex Sydney Hobart, purchased by Christian Beck, the legal software entrepreneur, and with Tony Mutter and also Chris Nicholson becoming a, a match-winning partnership for them. They've had to play second fiddle in, in Lion Otters in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. But, but they're not playing second fiddle today. Again, they've extended, and Scallywag has also got a bit closer to Andrew Comanche. Andrew's gone in towards Nielsen Park, but there's Law Connect out in Mid Harbour on a ley line to Shark Island. She won't have another jive, I don't think. She's laying down into the Shark Island mark. They'll furl and then go round the back of Shark Island, back up to Canai, and out. Here we go. This is going to be interesting. Scallywag powering down on port. Andu going out to engage, and Scallywag's trying to get round the bow of Andu. I don't think he'll do it. I think Andu will probably... He hasn't... He's on starboard, so what's going to happen here? Dave 
looks as though he'll just clear him. Yeah, Dave went... Ander's going to jive, I think. Yeah, he's jiving. OK. He's a bit short of the lay line here, Andrew. If, if Dave Witt can get the bow down a bit more, he'll make things very interesting for Andu. Andu unfurling. So well, David Witt and uh, Herman winning. 18-foot ace skippers know this harbour so well and they know all about Shark Island. And John Winning Senior as well. But look at this. Dave Witt's going to have a piece of Andu here. He's going to get up on his hip. Game on for second place as Lorcanek roars away in first place. They're about 300 metres short of the Shark Island giant mark. A lot quieter here at Shark Island now. This has been a textbook performance by Law Connect. And Tony, Tony Mutter made the, the point, Peter, that they sail this boat to 100% of its potential. So, off camera, Gordon, we can see Whisper sails down and just motoring up to have a look at this race. So they've obviously had some real problems aboard, which is a very dis big disappointment for Dave Griffith and the crew, but no disappointment here. A Christian Beck. What a moment this is. He's extended this lead. The real battle for second at the moment. But they're still only halfway through this race. At the jive mark, plenty of craft around. The Navy are out watching. So what they'll do here, they'll furl a jive and maybe unfurl to take them around the back of the island for a short moment before they'll put that big sail away to go upwind again. Here we go. OK, stand by. OK, furl almost complete. Ooh, OK, they're going... To, OK, furl's almost done. Jibing. Will they unfurl? Or will they drop the furling sail? No, I think it'll be too tight an angle to unfurl. So they'll just harden up around the back of the island and drop that A sail. But the real battle is going to be for second. OK, but Andrew's clear enough ahead so she can jive without any problem. Connect wrestling to get that big sail down. And they've actually increased their margin, Peter. Okay, okay. what's happening here? Law Connect is tilting the boat to windward. So to get the sail, that furling sail down on the windward side. Good crew work. They've got the sail down. Now they can go to normal heel. Very light behind the island. You can see it's quite a lee there, which he's through. Okay, we're on Andu. She's jibe, short of the mark. They won't unfurl, I don't think. Dave Witt's furling on Scallywag. Only a couple of boat lengths in this race for second. OK. Both will try and get those A-sails down on the deck for the beat up to Canai for the second time. So that's the distance, about three or four boat lengths in the battle for third and second. Oh. And Law Connect increased its margin uh, downwind by about 40 seconds, Peter. Wow, that is a great effort. Yeah, they were very solid down there. I thought they might have thrown a bit away in Watson's Bay, but gee, the time shows they haven't... They're back on the wind now as we watch Andrew Comanche go round the back of Shark Island. They'll get a bit of a lee there and drop the furled a sail. But meanwhile, stepping out on starboard tack is Law Connect, the race leader. And we're going to go back and have a look at some of the, the mini maxis now. URM, the 72 footer, leading the way ahead of Alive and Money Penny. Well, that's a, a no limit there, and Wild Oats 10. That's URM barreling on Port Ley Line, the Four Shark Island. That's the view on board. Full power, they'll be doing 12, 15 knots, a bit more perhaps. Yeah. 
She's at full wick here, and good breeze too, and this nor'easter about 16 knots. Good job, boys. It's Grant Simmer just getting hit by the main sheet. <laughs> Haven't been sailing long, Grant. <laughs> He's the tactician and certainly knows his way around. It's URM. But alive as uh, the next after URM and got a nice jump on Wild Oats 10, that's for sure. Wild Oats behind Alive. Yeah. By about 50, 60 metres. And you are in ahead of those yeah. six feet longer yeah. and 72 feet. Then followed by Money Penny and No Limit at the moment, bringing up the rear of the fleet with the for, Mini Maxis. And for those that might have just joined us, that uh, Whisper has retired from the race. We don't know why, but uh, we'll find out a bit later, no doubt. But that's disappointment. Meanwhile, Law Connect is heading over to the western shore and holds a, a lead of over a minute from Andrew Comanche with Scallywag maybe 15, 20 seconds astern. They're the top three. Okay, and that's fourth place, URM, just at the Jive Market. Shark Island is alive coming down after her. A bit lighter there, you can see it gets, the wind gets into a bit of a shadow of Vaucluse Rose Bay headland. And, and this is no limit? No limit. A little bit of a snafu with the windward sheet at the Jive. Barney Walker at the helm, three-time Hobart winner on the Australia's great yachtsman and great characters. Noel Drennan, the man they call Nitro aboard, another three-time Hobart winner, round the world race winner. So a very good crew David Gates has put together. Yeah, they've got Barney, Nitro and Disco on yep. board. Yeah. So it'll be a good party in Hobart with those boys as we watch Wild Oats jiving. So they've left the A-sail up to run into the mark. So they jived a little bit earlier than the others. They got a bit high on the ley line. Okay, well, out we go to the leaders again. That's second and third as we look at it. I've been impressed by Scallywag. She's put in a good effort. See, she only had her first race after 15 months last Friday night to Cabbage Tree. I think David Whittle will be Pretty pleased with the way she's going. And David Witt's great mentor was uh, the late Sid Fisher, whose mantra in life resonated with him. He said, you never pay full price for anything and you never give up. And yeah, that's one it. of the great characters, Sid. The softest part about Sid was his teeth, they reckon. <laughs> so He only took two days off a year. <laughs> Christmas Day, and Good Friday. Otherwise, it was roll the sleeves up and get the job done. Yeah. Did a lot for Australian yachting. Gave a lot of people a chance. A lot of people started their careers with Sid. His bark was certainly worse than his bite. That's for sure. OK, we've got Andrew out on port. I've chowed ahead. Just Clifton Gardens in the background. We're on. Andrew, look at that climb. It's like mountain climbing going from one side to the other. It's Clifton Gardens there. That's Andrew. Beautiful 18 knot, maybe 16 at the moment. Nor'easter. And the view from Andrew is not great. They're looking way ahead and they can see Law Connect middle of the harbour going in towards Camp Cove on a nice left hand shift. See, there she is, there's Law Connect, that's Camp Cove Beach way in the background. And 
Andy's opened up her lead over Scallywag now. Out to about 150 metres. Scallywag just uh, slow to accelerate out of the western shore. That's not a barbecue they're having on the back of that boat. The smoke coming out. That's <laughs> the motor running with a bit of smoke. The, the motor runs on these big boats to keep the hydraulic systems going because they use hydraulic to move the winches, to move the keel. So that's a great shot there of the three boats. See Law Connect tacking again to go on the western side of Sound Pigs. So Rob Mullally, our uh, boat cameraman, giving us the, the three leaders there in that shot. Law Connect, Andrew Comanche and Scullywag. Picture perfect day. We can't impress enough for those the people that might not be in Sydney and watching from overseas or interstate. It is a wonderful day, a 16 knot nor'easter and a wonderful day at the moment for Christian Beck and his crew on Law Connect. Holding the upper hand by a fair way and they're about halfway up the second beat to Canai. They run back to Shark Island and then the reach to the finish off the Opera House. Just see the canning keel there, right out to the windward side, a big bulb on the bottom of that keel. Hydraulics used to move that keel from side to side. This boat took uh, line honours in the 2019 Transatlantic race, the oldest oceanic race. It's been around the world and it's heading to Europe again. Law Connect way in the distance on starboard going in towards Obelisk, middle head there. She, she won't go that much further, I wouldn't think, before she tacks. Good sail change there on Andrew Comanche. Still holding that 100 metre lead over. Sung Hung Kai, Scallywag. Just come into some good pressure there, Scallywag. Now she's got to make the decision which side of Sound Pig she'll go. She's going to go to the western side, she's got to tack shortly. Looks as though they're setting up. Crew starting to come in, yeah. She'll tack on the hip of uh, Andu. That's Law Connect yeah. in the distance, yeah, just tacking as well. The three 100 footers, but Law Connect calling the tune over Andrew Comanche and Scallywag. In the top right hand corner will be the Can I Point rounding mark for the last time. <laughs> Representing the Greenwich Flying Squadron. A four-time runner-up, Law Connect. I'd say the biggest boat they've ever had on their register, Gordon. Uh, well, most they normally, definitely. <laughs> they normally race 12 for skiffs or cherubs, so when you throw in a 100-footer in the mix, quite a different kettle of fish altogether. Well, there's Euram working the western shore on uh, going in towards Clifton Gardens. That's the view on board. Just getting some unconfirmed news that a runner block collapsed on Whisper. I just hope that no one was uh, injured, but they're out here, so I doubt there's no injury, but that doesn't sound too good. Unconfirmed, the runner block collapsed on Whisper as we're back on URR, URM tacking. And their navigator is, um, as you mentioned, Peter Alice Parker from the Northern Beaches, and she's been doing a fantastic job on that boat. And we mentioned that URM leads the Artie Centre Sydney Blue Water Point Score Series. The Rolex Sydney Hobart will count double, but they're certainly in the box seat to take out the Blue Water Series. Well, Alice Parker, has uh, praises have been sung very highly by skipper Marcus Ashley Jones. And we're on Comanche. 
I would think they're not far off attack. They're going in towards middle head. Okay, they're starting to set up. Crew getting ready. Behind them, Scallywags tack before them. So they're both in towards Oblast middle head area. There goes Comanche. Crew racing across. There's Richie Allenson on the main sheet there. The guy that said he'd never ever go outside Sydney Heads again and he's off to Hobart once more. So he must think there's Herman winning steering. So Richie must think the ride's okay on Comanche. And one of their celebrity guests on board, Peter, is uh, Justin Hems, the uh, billion dollar pub restauranter and real estate man. Now you'd eat at his restaurant, what, once or twice a week, Gordon? I can't afford it. Come on, Gordo, you can do that. <laughs> Might take me there tonight. <laughs> so these two boats vying for second and third. At the moment it's Andu, that's Middlehead. But way ahead now is Lord Connect. The market Can I Point up near Manly, and the significance of Can I Point is, Gordon, that that is the original starting area for the very first Sydney Hobart race in 1945. That race that was started as a cruise and began a race and is now a part of Australian sporting folklore started in 1945 on Boxing Day right at Can I Point. And I do remember asking you last year the number of starters. Was it nine? Nine, yes. yes good. And on Sunday they're recreating the starting area for the classic Sydney Hobart regatta that will start up here at midday, so if you're on the harbour you'll see 30 classic yachts starting back at Canai. And these boats are far from classics, they're modern speed machines as we go live to URM. URM, across the line, currently in fourth place, leading the Mini Maxis behind Law Connect. Andrew Comanche and Scully Wag. Since she was purchased in 2019, she's been optimised for offshore racing and IRC, specifically though to, to win the Sydney Hobart race on handicap. But Law Connect is going to clinch, without any mishap, is going to clinch the Australian Maxi Championship with what has been a superlative performance here on the harbour in the Solus Big Boat Challenge, part of the Ray Marine Australian Maxi Championship. The issue they've got with Law Connect or any of these any of these boats is they're very complicated. Things can go wrong very quickly. So it's not over till it's over. It's an old saying, but with these boats, things can go quite wrong quite quickly. I'm not wishing any ill on any of them, but at the moment, Law Connect doing a very solid job as they're starting to get ready to sneak the furling sail up off the bowsprit. There they go, the four deck crew working hard to connect the halyard. And they're about 300, 200 metres, almost on a starboard ley line into the mark. They'll have to tack at the mark and then off downwind again. You can see the heel these boats get is quite dramatic. The windward rudder out of the water. That's a great shot of the three maxis there. And you can just see the distance. This is going to be a good lead to Law Connect. I know she's well underlaying. I'm sorry, she's nowhere near the starboard ley line. She'll go out to a port ley line and have about 60 or 80, maybe 100 metres in on port, which is a good setup time for the crew. Still to get the. There's the sail going up now. You can see that A sail slowly creeping up the mast, hydraulic winches pulling that halyard up, just a good squirt there, she's leaning over, she's got to get that halyard up, locked off, tight as anything, so they can unfurl it, if it's loose or not locked off, it's ugly, they can't unfurl it. So he's, yeah, he's going to have about 60 metres in on port tack. There's the mark there, you can see that. Can I point, top screen, manly in, in the distance. You can either go to a surf beach or a 
Harbour Beach at Manly, one of the beauties of that suburb. There's Law Connect, Tax on the Port, Hetzel Inn, the A Sale, up. Hetzel just starting to ease. Gordon, you've got the time yes, running the time. on your yes, I have. gold yep. Rolex there. That's good. <laughs> okay, she's around. Mainsail off, bow down, Hetzel out. I think they'll just take everything just a little bit easy. They've got such a big lead here. They're a good puff to get the bow down. Look at see that spray off the bow. Boat sits flat, mainsail off. Okay, Hetzel's up, uh, the furley sails up, nice and tight. What are they going to do? They're going to jibe, are they? No? Yeah, they're going to jibe. I think they're going to jibe set. Okay, to get out in the stronger breeze. Good move. There's more breeze out onto that side of the harbour. They jibe, then they'll unfurl. <laughs> There's the unfurl, got the job done. Good. I think Chris Nicholson realised there's more breeze mid to western side of the harbour than there has been down the eastern shore. We saw that last time. They've probably got just into Watson's Bay out of the breeze a little bit. Okay, back on Andu on a port ley line. And Scallywag tacking up on their hip. They're a fair way back now in third place. They've probably held their own upwind, Peter. The margin's going to be similar to what it was when they'd rounded Shark Island. But you've got to say it's been a, a tactical masterclass from Law Connect. Well, they have dominated. And speed as well. There's on Comanche. We'll watch the bear away. And what are they going to do? They haven't got the... Okay, we're live on board and... On left of screen, bow down. There's the furling sail going up now. Okay, it's not up yet. Okay, they still haven't got it up. Just loading the winch to get the halyard up. They're jiving as well. Still the furling sail, you can see it. It's not up as yet. So the hoist will be delayed. No furling sail. They're just getting up now. It's got to be locked off before they can unfurl. Okay, it's just up now. No, there they go. No, it's still un not locked off. You can see it's flopping around. Okay, here's Scallywag around. And what was the delta there, Gordon, between 140. 140. 140. Okay, that's a fair lead. And go a long way on a maxi. A minute 40, a scallywag bears away. Oh, he's a screamer of a puff here. These hydraulic winches be working overtime to get the keel out, get the sails on, main sheet out. Wow, they're away. Okay, we're on the run down to Shark Island for the last time. We might get some speed on these boats once they get out into the middle of the harbour and see exactly what speed they're doing. Law Connect then, Christian Beck with a, a lead of a minute 40 at the Can I Point rounding for the second time. You can see here, Gordon, Andrew did a jibe set, they've gone out to middle head on starboard, Scallywag, bear away set on port, middle of the heads, not as much breeze as Andrew, so I think Scallywag will be jibing off shortly as we watch URM coming on the wind in fourth place, still a long way from the weather mark, but on handicap, probably looking strong. These maxes have got to give these smaller boats a lot of time on handicap. But it's all about the line on us for these three maxis. Scallywag still the jibe, still in the middle of the heads on port. And URM in terrific shape to take out the mini maxi on handicap in the Australian Championship. This is the third time the event has been staged and being chased by. Alive, Alive in fifth place, and then Wild Oats 10, and Money Penny, and No Limit. Andrew Comanche just 
sailing past Alive, which is heading up to the windward mark. She's well ahead of Wild Ads 10, that's for sure. Must be There's Alive, must be stuck in height. Must be a strong chance for handicap honours in the Rolex Sydney Hobart race. Adrian Carlin, yeah. navigator on board. The fastest woman in the world to circumnavigate non-stop. So, Law Connect again going in towards Lang Point, Watson's Bay area. Well, well that's 10 on starboard off middle head. And Muddy Penny about to come into shot. There she goes, Sean Langman. And uh, she's having a little war with Wild Oats 10 at the moment and No Limit is bringing up the rear of the fleet. So Peter, in the, uh, the classic regatta, which uh, gets away um, this weekend, is it Friday? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, and there's beyond a, love and war. Yeah, and there's a boat more your pace, Gordon, there, a little two master. Have a look at that. What a beauty. What a contrast that is to Will today and yesterday. Look at that. The old wishbone rig. Fantastic. In the background, the two super maxis. What a contrast. Okay, back on Andu. Okay, now. We just passed through a time tunnel. Yes. It's, it's what Andu or Law Connect is doing is covering from the front, which is not an easy thing to do. You can, when you're going upwind, it's easy to cover. Downwind, it's a little bit different. But Law Connect is matching Andu Comanche's every move here. So he's not letting Andu Comanche get out to one side of the course that may gain a slight advantage. But it's such a big lead at the moment. And one of our researchers tells us, Gordon, that this race is identical to the conditions we had in the first Big Bag Challenge in 1994, the Brinda Bella one. So there you go. So thank you to Di Pearson for those facts. Di Pearson, the media director for the Rolex Sydney yeah. Hobart. So those conditions were terrific. So Law Connect probably just waiting till Andrew jibes. Andrew off camera is jibing. Probably close to a low line to Shark Island, I think. There's a Scallywag. Scallywag, uh, hull designed by Andy Dovell, the former US naval architect, who was headhunted to Australia by the late Alan Bond in the early 80s and he later joined forces with Ian Murray and Ian Burns to form the celebrated Murray, Burns and Dovell yacht design team. And uh, don't they dominate in terms of entries in the, in the Rolex Sydney Hobart? What a design team. No longer operating uh, as a trio, they're now individual, but uh, scallywag. Okay, well, what's happened here is that Law Connect is extending into Clifton Gardens. They'll probably try and jive on a port ley line into the mark, while Andu is way short of the ley line. Okay, there's Law Connect. Not, oh, she's just jiving now, yeah. Okay. Off Clifton Gardens, there she goes. Complete, unfurl, and there's the picture perfect day that we've been talking about on the harbour. Well, it's a triumphant outing. Um, not far to go now for Law Connect. The race certainly not over, but you've got to say Law Connect, long odds on to see it through to the finishing line. Andu has got at least two more jibes to get into the island. She's doing one jibe now, whereas Law Connect is probably set up on the ley line, so she's got no more jibes to do. Scallywag's got at least two jibes to do. 
And who just threw her jibe. She's got to go out to Law Connect's line. Well, it certainly it sets things up, Peter, too, for the for the start of the Rolex Sydney Hobart, which will be shown on the the Seven Network. You'll be commentating with Mark Beretta, but with the the spectator, the you know the exclusion zones, the very tight racing, um, it's going to make for some fantastic action at the start of the Rolex Sydney Hobart with these 100 footers. Absolutely and one of the great days in Australian sport as I've said often, Boxing Day on Sydney Harbour, hard to beat and it'll be the same again this year with these three maxis as you say. But steamy to victory as Law Connect, only a couple more manoeuvres to do. Law Connect then, on the ley line for this rounding at Shark Island. They grumbled, Comanche top right, there's the jibe. They've jibed early, so they're going to be maybe a little high on ley line here. Law Connect steaming down towards the island. Well, they've got to hope for a mistake on Law Connect now, if they're to turn the tables. We're getting down to the finishing straight once we get round Shark Island. Walk and neck, Christian Beck, sailing master Tony Mutto, tactician, world sailor of the year, nominated Chris Nicholson. Still strong, 16 probably knots, a bit light around Rose Bay Shark Island here is Law Connect approaching the final mark. And then we'll reach to the finish at the Opera House. I think they'll probably carry these eight sails to the finish. They'll just furl, jive, unfurl, and sit back and enjoy. Well, she's 15 years old but uh, performing like a, a teenager. Okay, she's furled. Okay, can get the jib in a little. Unfurl, leave the jib loose, yep. Job done. It'll get lighter as they get up in the lee of the island. Once they poke out from that, it'll be full wick to the finish and we'll follow them up and our great skipper Jimmy Bury will get some speed on these boats and just be able to tell you how fast they are actually going. At the moment they're only doing a leisurely 16 knots, but once they get out from the island they'll be fully wicked up. Here they come. Breeze probably 16, 18 knots now, freshening as the day goes on, as you'd expect with a summer nor'easter. Andrew at the mark in the background. They've closed up a little, I think. Gordon here, they've uh, yeah, definitely, the definitely closed. Definitely closed. Made up about 30 seconds. Okay, and here comes Law Connect. Crew sitting it well up every little bit to get the bow up. Get that bow out of the water and she'll be smoking. She's smoking at the moment. 22 knots she's doing, Peter. Well, there you go. Look at that. Fantastic. In the background, Andu just jibing, trying to get that unfurled. Just getting this a sail unfurled, still not set on Andu. Law Connect just pumping away here to the finish. 24 knots now. Breathtaking stuff here on the harbour.
in the bow, Carlos Hernandez Romina from Spain, Brad Jackson and Chris Beavis, two key Kiwi sailors on board. finish here for Law Connect who's steaming to the line at 26 knots. Well you've only got an average 18.9 knots to break the Sydney Hobart record. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's hard to do, let me tell you. Comanche holds that record of one day nine hours. Haven't you got to average 26 knots to break the record? I'm, I'm not sure, no, I think it's Come back to you on that, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my maths right. No, I, I think to do it in 24 hours, you've got to average 26 knots. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But to break the current record, it's 18, 18, 18 knots, yeah. And that Derwent River, that's always the killer, but Sydney Harbour is not a killer for Law Connect as they power it towards the Sydney Opera House. What a moment for Christian Beck. Just lovely. So. Andrew Comanche are going to have a bit of trouble getting around Garden Island at the moment. You see in the background they've got a much fuller sail, a reaching sail that's, that may have to furl to get up around Garden Island, but not more connect. She's got... And Peter, remember that Christian Beck has been a bridesmaid three times for line honours in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Is history about to change in 2023? And in the background, Andrew Comanche has had to furl the reaching sail. She wasn't going to get round Garden Island, but not Law Connect. She's got a much flatter reaching sail, which is probably one of the older sails that Tony Mutter was talking about earlier because they wrecked their big sail on Friday night. But uh, this old sail, if it is, it's doing the job. They're about 300 metres from the finishing line off uh, Lady Macquarie's chair at the Opera House. There's the Opera House, the Harbour Bridge, Fort Denison. The breeze tra traditionally lighter up here because you get a lot of lees of the foreshores. But uh, so she's speed is way down at the moment. But uh, no danger now, only doing a leisurely 12 knots. And Law Connect is going to take out the Solace Big Boat Challenge for 2023 and also the Ray Marine Australian Maxi Championship. We've had a beautiful nor'easterly breeze here today. Shocking luck for Whisper, who had a, a gear failure and had to retire from the race, the 62-footer, the JB62. Andrew Comanche has chased Law Connect all the way, but this boat has been just absolutely dominant and tactically superior on the day. Won the start, Andu wasn't able to cross her, and now she's poised to take line honours. Yeah, terrific effort by this crew, and she's got one more jibe in, actually. She's above the finishing line, so she's there's the committee boat just to the left of screen there, so she's got a jibe and very light back up, up here under the influence of Fort Denison and the Mossman Shore. So speed is way down. You can just see the wake coming off the stern is minimal. It's a very soft jibe. Just unfurling, just gently, gently. They'll be lucky to be doing eight knots, I guess. So she's got the unfurl done but in no danger behind her and who is slowed down as well. Got some accurate timing going here. Not far off it now. She's probably one more jiving in, but she'll try and just get the bow down. There's nothing really to be gained by being too smart. Yeah, she's going to one more jive in. She'll furl and in. We'll listen for the hoot up. And she is close to finishing. There's the orange finishing boy. Not unfurling, just 
even dropping the jib. There she is. She's across. Well done. Top marks to Christian Beck and his crew. They must be very pleased on this effort. A lot of congratulations around, shaking of hands. Top effort indeed. Sail to perfection. Lorca Neck, Christian Beck, and they've completed the journey, Peter, in uh, an hour and just a bit over an hour and ten minutes. Two and a half laps of Sydney Harbour. And in the background, Andrew, that's Fort Denison, very light air. And that's URM there. They're back at Shark Island, I think, jiving. Just see how light it is up here, Gordon. The breeze has collapsed somewhat. Andrew sort of half furled, half unfurled, whichever way you look at it. So they got one more jiving in, but at the moment it's slow, slow. They're just trying to furl so they can jibe, I think. A scallywag a fair way behind. And scallywag will take a lot of confidence yeah, from this outing yeah, here today. Dropped off a little towards the end, but early on she was solid. And it's still everything's still brand new on that boat, so more fine tuning, sail training. Crew training will have them absolutely spot on and, for the Hobart race. And, and they take so much to get right. There's so many moving parts, and especially on a maxi boat, to, to get everything together. It, it takes a long while as Andrew Comanche limps to the finishing line. Peter, what about the, the handicap prize in this uh, Solus Big Boat race? You've got to say that um, URM and probably Alive are going to battle that out. I would think that's the case, Gordon. Both both well positioned. Okay, this is going to be all, but all about two minutes. Just minute 55 has gone now, and Andrew's still not quite there. We'll call it two minutes, I think, to be fair to all parties. There's Andrew just jiving in light air at the finish. So it's just over two minutes. Oh, and that's a slow finish for Andrew. And Scallywag, she's got a a sail unfurled, but just see how light it is, going from 26 knots boat speed to about 6 knots or 8 knots. And it limps across the line. So for the second day in a row, um, Law Connect has beaten Scallywag, uh, beaten Andu. So I don't know whether you can read too much into it, probably not, but psychologically a, a good lift for Christian Beck and uh, Law Connect. Scallywag also just drifting in, so she'll be about three and a half minutes behind, I would think three and a half minutes behind Law Connect in third position. And, a, and a bit, probably about a minute and a half behind Andrew Comanche. And our next boat will be the leader of the, the mini Maxi pack, it'll be URM Anthony Johnson. We're on board of URM and they're out in the breeze. They're off uh, Clark Island, hammering towards the finish. Great shots here from our camera person, Mel McPherson on URM. Did and you the... say Mel McPherson, Gordon? No, you'd like it to be, Peter, wouldn't you? Oh. <laughs> Hello to Mel, one of the great camera women. She does the Hobart start and jumps off on Boxing Day off one of the yachts. And I think she's doing it again this year. So we get some great shots of Mel from Mel. Mel might be interested to know that a, a World Cup winning wallaby by the name of Andrew Blades used to sit next to Elle McPherson on the school bus <laughs> going to Kalara High School. I'm sure Blades, his wife, Nikki, will be happy to hear that, but... Anyway, we'll get back to yacht racing and leave the models to themselves. There's URM. Everything looks pretty good. They've done a great job. They're just racing under Hetzel to the finish. Our drone pilot, Piers Hasgard. Our main cameraman on the boat, Rob Mullally. And uh, the drone assistant, Sam Brasher. Uh, they've got their... fabulous pictures. Two hensels up, they've got the conventional hensel and then the reaching jib top or whatever they call it there. A, a sail has come into vogue in recent times. It's set well above the bowsprit. 
you can see it there, just high up to the masthead and doing the job pretty nicely as we follow them in to the finish with Clark on the background. It's going to get lighter up here. We shouldn't forget Tim Nermi, who was uh, our cameraman on board, Andrew Comanche as well. Yep. But spectacular stuff here from Mel McPherson. And special thanks to our director, Michael Chittenden, Chitty, and our skipper here on Sail Media, James Bury, to provide this coverage here today on behalf of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. This boat has been sensational in 2023. The four Johnson brothers on board, the URM group, uh, very focused on sustainable waste management. Uh, they run the boat like a, a company operation. It's very professional, but it's all about having enjoyment and fun, and it's all about the people on board. You can see them working on another sail in the bow. If it gets light up here and the breeze frees, which it will, they get round Garden Island and put a bigger reaching sail up. You see the four-deck crew getting the tack out to the bow. Now, I think they probably will set it shortly because it is very light towards the finish. A yacht, cruising yacht, right in their way at the moment. The breeze will be getting lighter and freer as they approach. They're trying to wave this boat out of the way. Oh, where's he going? He finally sees them. Gets out of the way. So you are in, I think they'll set this sail. They can see the crew pulling the clue back. There they go. They're setting. There's Mel out camera lady in the back right hand corner good set is it no they've got it freed now okay it's going to trim it bow will go down and they've got good pace into the finish but the breeze will get lighter they're still not set marcus ashley jones on the helm they just getting Maybe. a luff now set So they're going to aim into Fort Denison, and there's probably about two or three minutes from the finish. Just gets very light up here. So they've got fourth spot sewn up, and they'll be pretty strong on handicap. And they should pretty well clinch the Australian Maxi Championship, sponsored by Ray Marine. So very happy result there for the URM group. And Marcus Ashley Jones, the skipper will be sailing in his 19th Rolex Sydney Hobart. So they're just jiving to lay into the finish. They've probably got one more jiving in. Oh, come on, boys, you've got to get that spinning around. It's so light. Oh, that ace sail, you can see it's fouled up to the windward side of the jib. Just slowly, get not enough breeze to get it round. They've got a bit of a snafu there, a wine glass. Oh, that won't be pleasing everyone. There'll be a few veins popping there. Well, the lives' eyes will be lighting up, Peter. They're uh, four or five hundred metres astern, and yeah. they'll be challenging for the, the handicap prize, the IRC prize in the Mini Maxis. And this is alive now. Yeah, they're going to carry this reaching sail right to the finish to get round Garden Island. I think it's going to be tight. They'll be just luffing this sail. I don't think they'll afford to roll it, but let's see what happens here. Still got the headsail set under the A-sail. They're barreling up. Meanwhile, URM is approaching the finishing line in the distance. Justin Mulkerns in the bow for URM group ahead. Yeah, in the trying distance. to sort out the problems. Yeah, URM just approaching the finish now and they will be about, not about, they're about, uh, I want to say they're not about, they're about almost 10 minutes behind Law Connect. Alive, there's URM approaching the finish. Alive barreling down, so advantage alive here towards the finish. She's carried this pressure through a lot better than URM. Well, she rates better too, Peter. She's obviously shorter, six feet shorter. 
and so she's going to throw out a big challenge for the handicap honours okay, in the just, Solis Big Boat Race. They're just lowering the jib now. They left the jib up to make sure they could get round Garden Island. So they're now lowering the jib because they're not quite laying the finish, but they get a good puff, which they're getting now. They can get bow down, and URM was very slow in this part of the race. So, as you say, advantage alive in this last part of the race. And they've kept well clear of Fort Denison. They, I think they saw what happened ahead with the 100 footers. So they've got the all clear to jibe if they need to, and they're very light here. They're doing only about, ooh, what do we do? Eight and a half knots at best. And they just put the bow up for a bit more pressure. They've got one jibe or two and in. It's very... Another nice job here, Peter, by Adrian Carlin, the, the navigator, the celebrated Australian sailor. This is the former Blackjack, owned by Peter Harburg, bought by Philip Turner back in 2014. And she had a fabulous Hamilton Island week, winning her division. And they've shown their class again here today for Philip Turner. Just getting slight pressure now. Nothing great, but going to have a quicker finish than URM did, that's for sure. So the handicap will be interesting, the handicap result. And I'm they not... represent the Derwin Sailing Squadron, Peter, in Hobart. Philip Turner, by the way, is not on board, but will be for the Hobart. So she's not far off a jibe here. A lot of spectator ferries and craft getting in the way as she's going to extend out and now jibe, I think. There she goes. Furl. Almost complete and then unfurl. Yep. Unfurl coming. Slowly, slowly. There it is. Bang, there it is. And they'll one more, they're right at the committee boat and they'll probably one more jibe to go in and bow down. There they go. So she ended up about uh, unconfirmed on time. About 12 minutes 15 behind Law Connect. And next to finish will be Wild Oats. The full A sail there, but again, a light. And Money Penny's done a good job as well for Sean Langman. She's undergone a, an eight month refit. So Wild Oats will be a good two minutes behind Sister Ship Alive. boats are all are limping to the finish as all these boats did when they got up towards Garden Island to the west of Garden Island as well as jibes. They've got a, a bit of pressure there so they'll probably have one of the quicker finishes of the leaders. And Peter they've been uh, great rivals while that's 10 and also Alive, the, the sister ships, but honours today with Alive. There'll be no Wild Oats in the Rolex Sydney Hobart in 2023. There will be the, the original Wild Oats competing. Two-time winner of the race, the FAR 43, originally built by Bob Adley for the 85 Admirals Cup. Well, that's 10 just gliding to the finish. So she's almost over. You just see her getting very light there. Just trying to run square to get across the line. Oh, it's light. And then further back, which we'll see in a moment, Money Penny rolled the dice somewhat and gone to left Fort Denison to port. It got so light, so she's going to have one and in on port. She's just getting good breeze here. A ferry approaching, but she's going to extend out here and come back in on Port Jibe. Have they seen the ferry? I think they hopefully have. They'll soon hear the ferry if they haven't. That's the problem with those big uh, head sails. Um, they do block your view. Yeah, so she's dropping the head sail now, so they'll get a better view. 
So Wild Oaks is across. Money Penny still in light air. Oh, gotta get that windward sheet off, boys and girls. Okay, that's their approach. The breeze just absolutely collapsed up here. And left, left to finish is no limit. The lowest rater in the fleet. And here's Money Penny. Still got to get that sail set. Not enough breeze to get it round the fourth day. Just getting round now. They've got to. They're literally limping to the finishing yeah, line, aren't they? Yeah. Still, the Hetzel's not set completely. And all these mm. minutes count when it comes to the overall handicap situation. Money Penny, 69 feet. She's still about uh, 40 seconds or more from the finish. No limit in the background. Uh, sorry, Money Penny in the background and in the foreground, no limit running in on port. And there's not much wind. Okay, Money Penny just starting to get a rock and roll as we on board here her it's the finishing boy at just under her head saw or a reaching sail so down she comes and across now so one to come no limit David Goats then, the, the trailer. David Goats, the former president of Australian Sailing and a past Commodore of the Royal Brighton Yacht Club and also a member of the Sandringham Yacht Club in Melbourne. And uh, he commutes to Sydney every week to take part in the twilight racing. She's a sister ship of the former Hobart winner, the great boat Loki. She's placed in the Hobart race, of course. She was uh, placed as Voodoo. I think she in, yeah, in third in 2018. Yeah, and yeah. I think she was 10th on Lion Honours last year yeah. and fourth in her division zero. David Gates steering there with. Barney Walker in his ear, and they are almost complete the race for us. It's a nice finish for no limit. They're done and dusted. The race is done and dusted. Well, what a what a breathless telecast that was. It was a, an epic race, and uh, as we've mentioned, a masterclass by Law Connect. Defeating Andrew Comanche. Andrew Comanche not used to playing second fiddle in any race she takes part in, but today Law Connect really was absolutely sensational, winning the start, Peter, and then controlling the whole race. And, and tactically, um, they didn't put a foot wrong. Well, without start, stating the obvious, it, it, it doesn't mean really that much for the Hobart race. Psychologically, yes. But I think it will give the boys on Law Connect a lot of confidence to know that they can handle Andrew Comanche in the harbour. Getting offshore is a different matter. It's a long way to Hobart. A lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things can go right with the boats, with the weather. But uh, nonetheless, full marks to Law Connect. They got a great start. They kept on keeping on. Andrew Comanche just looked a bit out of whack to me. They had a couple of sloppy tacks and they just didn't look in their full rhythm. But uh, take nothing away from Law Connect and those boys. I think they were uh, outstanding today. And you've you got to get round the track and get round well. And that's what they did. And Scallywag, good early on. Probably just fell off the pace a little towards the end. But just forget, don't, can't forget that they're only started racing on 
Friday after 15 months in the shed and a complete rejig of the boat. So it's going to take a long while for them to get up to maximum pace. And URM solid again. I think they'll be strongly positioned on the handicap along with Alive. And I think early on these two boats are probably on the top line of favouritism for handicap honours in the Rolex Sydney Hobart race. Disappointment for Whisper having to retire early with a, we believe, damaged gear. But today I'd say full marks to more connect, no doubt about that. A solid line on his win. Terrific crew work. Great tactics by the boys there. So Christian Beck must be very thrilled leading into the Hobart race. No more races to go. So they will start on the first line of favouritism for line on us. So their battle with Andrew Comanche on the 618 miles to Hobart is going to be another highlight of this great race. And don't forget SHK Scallywag. She's not going to be far away either. But a wonderful day on the harbour. Um, I think everyone who's been watching must have enjoyed it as we look at the great side of the great city of Sydney. Well, just on a footnote, when Christian Beck, Peter, purchased Law Connect back in 2017, his goal was to be first out of the heads in the, in the Boxing Day Classic. Well, he's taken a few more steps since then and uh, he's clinched the Australian Maxi Championship sponsored by Ray Marine and he's won the Solar's Big Boat challenge. It's been a spectacular day and again our thanks to our skipper James Bury, Sail Media and Chitty, our director, and on behalf of Peter Shipway, we'll sign off from beautiful Sydney Harbour.